News at 5.30, watching out for you. We have to figure this out because we're at an all-time crisis mode of this. The story you'll see only on Coin6. We're tracking a major rise in assaults to paramedics in Portland, including this video of a driver ramming his SUV into an ambulance rushing to a medical emergency last month. We were the first to expose the problem earlier this month. And tonight we are following up on this, sending Elise Haas to ask tough questions about what needs to be done to keep paramedics safe and keeping them in this difficult profession, Elise. With the current violent work environment that Multnomah County is experiencing, some paramedics tell me that they're ready to call it quits. This comes at a time when hiring new paramedics is proving to be increasingly difficult for AMR. When it gets dark in the city of Portland, uh, it's almost like it's a different world. Paramedic Chris Tabor works the night shift in Multnomah County. The city slows down, and that's, you know, usually when we see the majority of our violent crimes, as well as the rest of the sicknesses that weren't taken care of during the day. Tabor says it's not unusual for there to be an instance where someone was violent toward a medic every single day. Anything from knives being in play, box cutters, um, obviously, the events of people almost getting, you know, ran off the road or struck by cars um, or just people uh, randomly attacking us in the streets with pepper spray, bats, anything they could have. We acknowledge that the problem is there. Multnomah County Medical Director Dr. John Jew is responsible for leading emergency medical services. He's worked in the field for more than three decades. We've seen a, a, a hum, uh, tremendous rise in violence since the start of COVID to the point that it's four to six hundred or even higher percent. He says many times the violent patients who paramedics encounter are high on drugs. I would say a good portion, 50 to or more percent, are drug and alcohol. So it's uh, basically psychotic behavior caused by drugs. Dr. Ju says there are three main factors contributing to the rise in rage and violence against paramedics and EMS. He points to the pandemic, compounding limited resources and a lack of socialization in recent years. Meth, which he says pervades a lot of patients paramedics come in contact with, and a lack of drug treatment centers in the region. Those are all uh, factors, huge factors into why um, we're seeing the number of patients we are that may be aggressive towards us. We know what the problem is. We can't get them into treatment. You need to have a place to send them to. There's no place to send them to. Dr. Jew compares the line to get into a drug detox center in Multnomah County like lining up to get into a game at the Moda Center. So if you're higher than a kite and you can't remember that you need to go to detox, that's the problem here as well. So our system has a long ways to go to improve that care for our patients. Because of a lack of treatment centers, Dr. Jew says that his paramedics have repeated encounters with patients. They definitely felt very um, inept and not well equipped to deal with. I pressed Dr. Ju, asking if these repeated encounters with the mentally ill and drug addicted turn paramedics into targets. But the entire system agrees with that, myself included. Dr. Ju says the role of the Multnomah County EMS office is to provide paramedics with medical direction, teaching, equipment and supplies, and maintaining morale and staffing. As a result, paramedics want the county to provide them with better hands-on behavioral health training. If you look at how many patients we transport per day, and you take into account the percentage of those patients that are behavioral related, that's going to outnumber the amount of cardiac arrests um, by 10. But I have practiced cardiac arrests at least four times a year, but I never practice verbal de-escalation of a patient in psychosis. Well, we agree. I think that's an area that we can improve on. Paramedics asked the county to reevaluate the protocols to include police's help in restraining potentially violent patients. It's my partner and I um, usually handling the restraint of the patient and we would like to be able to have more people. Ideally, there should be one individual on each limb uh, to safely restrain so the patient doesn't hurt themselves. That's mainly the goal here. It's our safety and the patient's safety. Lastly, they'd like to have access to different, safer vehicles with barriers for these kinds of transports versus the typical ambulance. I think it would definitely, definitely be better than putting someone in a box with their arms and legs tied down uh, to transport them to the hospital because 
a lot of times that's more traumatizing um, than what they're actually going through. But for people who cross the line, commit crimes, and put lives at risk, EMS is asking the courts to hold them accountable. We show up to everything. We show up to your gunshot wounds and your strokes and your heart attacks. We always show up for you, no matter when it is. And we need someone to show up for us to say it's not okay for us to keep getting assaulted and shot at and stabbed at. That's what we need from Multnomah County, from Multnomah County EMS, from all of our allied partners, is for someone to help us out and stand with us on this to ensure that we can all go home at the end of the day. For paramedics to provide the best care to patients, Tabor says it's going to take everybody to be on board, including hospitals, county medical direction, all the way up to the DA's office. While there are some small improvements to protocols that can be made in the near term, there are also larger improvements the county needs to consider system-wide to get this issue under control for the health and safety of our entire community. As for the most recent attack on paramedics where that driver ambushed them with his car, that case is still moving through the criminal justice system and we are watching it very closely.